Dear audience, dear chair, my PhD topic are the fixation techniques used in the therapy of jaw fractures. My name is Petra Papucci, I'm an oral surgeon and a PhD student at the Department of Oral Maxillofacial Surgery and Stomatology. My supervisor is Joel Nemeth and my SMS is Kata Kelemen. My vision is to learning and utilizing the latest techniques in case of patients with jaw fractures. And my mission is to using a faster and more comfortable splinting method during the night duties. You can see here my specific goals. At first, to investigate the effectiveness and safety of the currently used methods in treatment of jaw fractures. And my second goal is uh, to uh, see the maxillofacial injuries related to the e-scooter usage. You can see here my first topic. It's a systematic review and the network meta-analysis. In case of jaw fractures involving the dental occlusion, we have to use the intermaxillary fixation. It's a synonym for the maxillomandibular fixation to re-establish and uh, uh, to uh, control the occlusion. Why is it important? Because mandibular fractures are the second most frequent facial injuries, more common in males in their 20s. The fractured ends must be fixed because if we don't do that, there could be an absence of proper bone healing uh, and it can lead to bite and functional differences and inflammation, like you can see in the picture. We can uh, achieve it in two ways. With a closed reduction, it's the conservative treatment, and with open reduction and uh, internal fixation, it's the surgical type. On the first picture, you can see the Eric Arch bar. It's the gold standard and most frequently used technique. We use it in our clinic as well. You can see here that there are two arch bars and we fix them with steel wires in every single interdental spaces. It provides a good stability, but it could be painful for the patient. It's not too time effective and uh, it's uh, really difficult to maintaining a good oral hygiene with that technique. On the second picture, you can see the IMF screws. It's easier to use and shorter time to applicate. Uh, it's a better oral hygiene with that, but we can cause many atherogenic injuries with the screws. On the third picture, you can see a hybrid technique. It's the hybrid maxillomandibular fixation. There are two arch bars, and we fix them uh, with cell drilling screws. So uh, we can provide a good stability, and uh, the patient uh, can, uh, um, can make a good oral hygiene, but we can cause uh, uh, many atherogenic uh, tooth damages with the cell drilling screws. Our aim was to compare these three techniques. Our clinical question is that, uh, is there any differences in the effectiveness and safety of the currently used methods in treatment of jaw fractures? Our population uh, were adult patients with jaw fractures who need IMF. Our intervention and comparator are the Eric Arch bar, the IMF screws, and the hybrid MMF. And you can see the outcomes, the main outcomes in the table. For example, the application and removal time, the oral hygiene, the glove perforation and needle stick injuries, the atherogenic injuries, and the cost. Our aim is to provide a shorter application time and more comfortable uh, application and usage for surgeon and patient as well. You can see here my systematic search and my final search key. And at first, uh, I had uh, more than 20,000 articles. After the full text selection, uh, third, and uh, after the citation and reference chasing, 30 eligible full, alt, uh, full texts uh, left. You can see here that uh, we have finished uh, the application time and removal time anal analysis, but we have many ongoing analyses as well. At first, I have chosen the application time. You can see on the left side my network plot, where the dots are the treatment types. And on the right side, you can see my sucra plot. Uh, it shows the effectiveness of the treatment. You can see here that the sucra value of IMS screws is approximately uh, 90%. That means that it's the most time effective treatment time in case of application time. You can see here my leak heat plot. Uh, where the values are the uh, point estimation values, and uh, in the brackets you can see the confidence intervals. Uh, I measure them in minutes. You can see here that to applicate the IMF screws are 47 uh, minutes less, 
and uh, to applicate the hybrid MMF is uh, about uh, 31 minutes uh, less than to application uh, the gold standard Arikarge bar. These results are clinically relevant and statistically significant as well. The next outcome was the removal time. You can see here on the left side the network plot again, and the sucre plot, it's like the same, so the uh, most time effective treatment uh, was the IMF screws. The leak heat plot show, shows that the removal of IMF screws is about 15 minutes less than the gold standard Arikarj bar. It's a statistically significant result, and the removal of uh, hybrid MMF is about five uh, minutes uh, less than the Arikarj bar. It's only clinically relevant. The strengths of the studies were that uh, many of them are randomized control trials with a homogenic population, but uh, they have used uh, small case numbers. It could be a limitation. So I have now preliminary conclusions that uh, both of uh, these techniques reduce the application and removal time compared to the gold standard Arikarj bar. So we should use them clinically uh, more often, but we need uh, more multi-armed uh, studies. You can see here my progress. Uh, now the risk of bias assessment is in progress. My next topic uh, are the maxillofacial injuries related to the e-scooter usage. The e-scooters are a part of uh, the urban micromobility because they are highly available and environmental friendly way to transport. Uh, and they are cheap uh, and you can use them with an application, so it's really easy to use them. But there are no uh, speed limits, and we can reach really high speed with them. And there are no restrictions, for example, in case of helmet usage or uh, alcoholic intoxication. Why is it important for us? Because the most common injuries are face and head and neck injuries, especially fractures and soft tissue injuries uh, in case of young, drunk people at night. So our aim is to highlight that danger and identify the risk factors. My clinical question is that what are the risk factors and what is the prevalence of different maxillofacial injuries in adults related to the e-scooter usage? Uh, we would like to uh, see the maxillofacial injuries and risk factors. Uh, our context is the e-scooter using and the population are adult patients. You can see here my systematic search, uh, which was conducted in February and the final search key. So at first, uh, I had more than uh, one and a half thousand hits, and uh, now we are in the phase of the full text selection. So after the title abstract selection, I had uh, more than uh, 100 uh, eligible articles. So now we are in the full text selection phase. And you can see here again my two uh, goals. I uh, would like to uh, submit my paper in May, my first paper in May, and the second one in September. And I would like to close my presentation with the words of Dan Brown, that everything is possible, the impossible just takes longer. Thank you for your attention. Congratulations on your presentation. Thank you. It was very interesting. Uh, my question is regarding your first project. So you mentioned three techniques, and uh, I'm interested in that in your clinic, uh, which technique do you use, and uh, if you think that is the proper way. Uh, so we use in our clinic the gold standard technique, the Eric Archbar, but uh, it's a really long uh, time to applicate it, uh, especially night, so uh, we would like to use a more comfortable technique and it could be really painful for the patients to use that steel wires in every single interdental space. It could harm the papilla and the, the mucosa, so it's not the most comfortable um, treatment type for them, uh, but uh, it provides a good stability, so we would like to know that uh, is there any technique which provides the good stability, but it's not so painful and, uh, and uh, not time effective for the patients. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats on the presentation. I have uh, one question regarding your second topic. Um, weren't there any meta-analyses previously? Because I, I don't know uh, since when can people use these e-scooters, but uh, they're quite famous, and I'm really curious. 
Thank you for your question. Uh, so these e-scooters are famous uh, for approximately 10 years. Uh, I haven't found any meta-analyses or prospero registrations in this topic in maxillofacial view, but uh, I have read some papers uh, in an orthopedic view, so they have many, many problems with the e-scooters uh, from uh, um, 2015, but uh, there are no meta-analyses uh, in the maxillofacial view. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I have a, a question about uh, your first topic. Uh, you have uh, mentioned that uh, you are investigating the uh, iatrogen damages. Can you tell me what kind of damages, damages could be, for example? Yes, thank you for your question. The iatrogenic uh, damages are the tooth damages. So, for example, if we use the screw, uh, we we know that uh, where are the roots, but uh, we can harm them with the screws, with the self drilling screws as well. So uh, that means the iatrogenic damages. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a question. Thank you for your presentation. What do you think about the helmets? Can we find a special one which protects our jaws? Thank you for your question. I think the normal helmet uh, uh, can protect uh, the facial bones because you know uh, that uh, your nose and uh, zygomatic uh, bone or jaws are not protected with that. So uh, scooter drivers should use uh, helmets like uh, the motorcyclists, but it's, it's impossible. So it could be better and it could reduce minimally that uh, if uh, they would use only the normal helmets at first and after that we can go along. Everything is better than nothing. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I have two questions for each of your projects and one recommendation maybe. So let's start with the second one. Uh, the recommendation would be that don't limit yourself with 2015 because in the past there was a, another craze with segways. It's not really an e-scooter, it's a little bit bigger, but it's probably the same thing. You can still be drunk and fall forward. So maybe uh, you should do one more search and see if there are uh, segway related injuries as well, or just broaden the type of vehicle a little bit. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, maybe we uh, can uh, uh, make another investigation, but I think the mechanism is not the same because the SIG base uh, has a, a bigger uh, wells, so that's why uh, I think it's more safety than the e-scooters. And uh, I think they uh, can't reach uh, um, the uh, 30 or 40 km per hour, but I will see. Okay, because this now connects me to my second question that I don't really understand what is the research question you're trying to answer with a meta-analysis. Uh, we would like to answer the Cocopop framework, so we would like to highlight the prevalence of the facial injuries and uh, their risk factors, and we would like uh, to achieve uh, that they should limit that. So, for example, uh, in France, France uh, they have limited the e-scooter usage, uh, or it could be uh, the best if uh, people uh, can't use that uh, from uh, 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. or something like that, because uh, there could be uh, less injuries in our duties as well. Uh, that I get how you are doing it, but what is a meta-analysis saying that a cohort study is not saying? Why not mm. just a big cohort study? Mm. Something to yes. think about with your SMS. Yes. Very and good. the second is, uh, can I ask one more question? So this is a super interesting thing what you're doing with your first study. Because you have a network meta-analysis and one of your outcomes is actually an ordinal outcome. What is your plan? How are you going to statistically analyze it within a network meta-analysis framework? Have you discussed this with the statisticians? Uh, we have talked about that, but uh, we have many uh, analyses ongoing uh, because uh, uh, Noemi is our statistician, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a, so there was a short time uh, period uh, to uh, make that tables or. But what? do you know what is the approach? Or you just said, Noemi, please do it. Because I want to learn, because I want to do something similar. But if you don't have a plan for that yet, we will talk about it in the next progress. Yes, report. we are going to discuss it. Thanks.
Thank you very much. Uh, uh, just regarding, I think, uh, Janet's question, I think you should keep in mind what is your main, um, what is the main purpose of a meta-analysis. And as I see, I think it's quite clear that there is not a, a prevalence that is known for these e-scooter um, traumas, injuries. So I think that's your uh, main um, goal to understand what is this prevalence. So keep going and good yes. job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.